Hello all and welcome back to our channel. I appreciate you being here and spending some time with us. See my last video, my uh, hospital rant on vitamin D and uh, COVID-19. I've taken care of a lot of COVID patients in an inpatient setting or they're sick enough to be hospitalized. And um, because of my functional medicine and integrative medicine background, I know how important it is for vitamin D and, and with immune system and inflammation and so on and so forth. So I have been checking vitamin D levels on every single patient that I have admitted in the last year. That rant was basically after I had admitted a lady uh, to the hospital. She was in acute respiratory failure requiring oxygen with COVID-19. I, I order on every single patient, I order, like I said, a vitamin D. Unfortunately, even if I order it stat, uh, which generally gets you results pretty quick, um, depending on what part of my 12 hour shift these patients are you know, being admitted in, um, I don't always have the labs back by the time my shift ends. So I just happen to be looking, uh, before I publish that video, I happen to be looking at her lab after the fact, and um, it was nine. And uh, for those who don't know, vitamin D levels, generally we want them to be between 60 and 80 in my world and in the functional world. Uh, from the conventional side, we generally want it to be above 30, and hers was nine. That uh, made me want to uh, really make this one of my next topics, even though um, I definitely want to lay the groundwork of functional medicine and, and, uh, and disease processes and stuff like that. I think this is an important time to pause and say, hey, let's talk about um, COVID. And what I wanted to talk about it are a series of papers that have been published over the past 12 months. Um, and some of, some are a little older uh, that have to do with how vitamin D uh, modulates the immune system, how uh, vitamin D uh, prevents um, your chance of getting upper respiratory illnesses, um, colds, flus, etc. And then of course, uh, now in this time frame, uh, COVID-19. Um, there's been papers that have been published to show, to, to show the importance of how it affects whether you have symptoms or not whether or not you're hospitalized or not. Um, if you're hospitalized, the severity of the hospitalization and the prognosis, and then your prognosis for uh, being admitted to the ICU, or God forbid, um, you know, succumbing to COVID-19. So this is a, a vitally important topic for all of us right now in the middle of the pandemic. Um, vital importance for us, probably pretty much for everyone, all the time because we're you know matter no matter if COVID's in the in the environment or not you know we're always you know affected by you know colds and flus and stuff like that um, and there's obviously far-reaching um, importance of vitamin D and and how it affects you know bone metabolism calcium metabolism several other things hormone metabolism uh, testosterone thyroid production um, prevention uh, of cancer, et cetera. So these are things we'll talk about in future videos, but in this video, we're specifically gonna talk about how uh, the incidence uh, and and what the papers are showing regarding vitamin D and uh, upper respiratory infections and specifically COVID-19. Um, so let's just dive into this. Let's, let's go over the literature. The first paper we're gonna talk about comes from the NIH. It's titled, The Associations Between 25-Hydroxy Vitamin D Level and Upper Respiratory Tract Infection in the third National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. This, this is when I was talking about, there's papers that are published earlier that kind of lay the groundwork for what we're gonna be talking about in regards to COVID. This, was, this paper was published uh, February 23rd, 2009. And as you can see, if we go down to the conclusion, 25-hydroxy vitamin D levels are inversely associated with recent upper respiratory tract infections. This association may be stronger with respiratory tract diseases, even after adjusting for demographic and clinical characteristics, lower vitamin D levels were independently associated with recent URTI. The next paper we're gonna talk about comes from the Journal of Infection in Developing Countries and is titled Vitamin D and Respiratory Infections. This paper was published in August of 2014. In this paper, it was found that the evaluated studies show how important immuno, the immunomodulatory role of vitamin D is, which reduces the incidence and risk of upper respiratory tract infections in both children's and adults. The next paper we're going to talk about comes from the journal Nutrients. It's titled, Evidence that Vitamin D Supplementation Could Affect, Could Reduce Risk of Influenza and COVID-19 Infections and Deaths. And this paper was uh, published really early in the pandemic, March 2020. Yeah. Vitamin D deficiency has been found to be contribute to acute respiratory distress syndrome. So basically, if you have a low vitamin D, it's been already well known that um, you have an increased risk for ARDS, or acute respiratory uh, distress syndrome and the case fatality rates increase with age and chronic disease comorbidities, both of which have been associated with lower 25-hydroxy vitamin D levels. To reduce the risk of infection, it is recommended that people at the risk for risk of influenza or COVID-19 consider taking 10,000 units of vitamin D. My personal recommendation is that you have a doctor that is able to follow your levels because we actually treat to the level. So everyone's levels gonna be different. 
you know, maybe my, maybe my level is 60, maybe your level is 40, maybe this person's level is 17. And as this paper says, it says the goal is to raise 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels to 40 to 60. I personally, again, uh, for my patients, I have it between 60 and 80. The next paper we're gonna talk about comes from Critical Reviews in Food Science and Nutrition. And it's titled Vitamin D Deficiency Aggravates COVID-19, A Systemic Review and Meta-Analysis. They identified 1,542 articles and selected 27 of them. Uh, vitamin D deficiency was not associated with a higher chance of infection by COVID-19. This is kind of a red herring though, that being said, because if you look at the odds ratio, which uh, if it crosses one, it means that, that is not a significant finding. So actually they're finding that it's not associated with a higher chance of COVID-19 is actually false to say that because um, that, that data is poor data. However, when they looked at the risk for in severe cases of COVID-19, 64% uh, uh, more likely to have a severe case than a mild case if you have vitamin D deficiency. And that is good data because it doesn't cross one. Uh, vitamin D concentration uh, insufficiency increased the risk of hospitalization by 81% and mortality by 82%. Uh, we observed a positive association between vitamin D deficiency and the severity of disease. The next paper we're gonna go over is from the journal PLOS Pathogens. And this paper is titled Exploring the links between vitamin D deficiency and COVID-19. And the reason I wanna talk about this paper is because I wanna show how vitamin D works as an immune modulator. It does not suppress the immune system. It does not boost the immune system. It modulates the immune system. So what it'll do is it'll actually increase the amount of your ability to uh, basically fight off the infection itself. So it'll strengthen the immune system in some ways, but it will lower uh, inflammatory levels. And the reason why they think that you have a lower mortality and chance for ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome with uh, COVID-19 is because it helps uh, reduce the uh, severity severity and uh, potential of mounting what they call a cytokine storm. And that's the same reason why we uh, use steroids in the hospital for patients. So when people come into the hospital and they have a COVID infection that is severe enough to be hospital, require hospitalization, we will put people on steroids. Um, and so generally we are using dexamethasone, but we can always use prednisone, methylprednisolone, Basically the same reason why we want to use steroids for people is the same reason why vitamin D potentially works to help prevent uh, this cytokine storm, which basically means that your body's producing a ton of extra inflammatory markers that is over and above the amount necessary in order to uh, kill off an infection and it actually ends up hurting you as a collateral damage. So that's this is this is showing that when you uh, get vitamin D in your system, it, it then turns on the vitamin D receptor and it then augments the innate immune response and then it lowers the acquired immune response and it's just showing different uh, cytokines and different uh, in, uh, inflammatory markers that are uh, affected by this. Basically the, the gist of what I wanted to show you guys is that it does not lower your immune system, it does not raise your immune system, it modulates your immune system in a way that it, it allows you to uh, deal with the disease process better, aka deal with the virus itself, and then it also helps you not have an overwhelming and unnecessary immune response. The next paper we're gonna go over is from Clinical Medicine in 2020, and the title is, Does Vitamin D Deficiency Increase the Severity of COVID-19? And this paper is going to talk about how severe, you know, SARS-CoV-2 or, you know, COVID-19 includes myocarditis, thrombosis, or blood clot formation, and that cytokine storm, which we talked about, all which involve inflammation and a principal defense against uncontrolled inflammation in the uh, against viral infection in general is provided by Treg cells or T regulatory cells, which is a part of the immune system. Treg cells have been shown to be low in many people with COVID-19 and that can be increased, or those T regulatory cells can be increased by vitamin D supplementation. So they're basically saying that, that low vitamin D have been associated with an increase in inflammatory cytokines, those cellular chemical regulators that are part of the immune system. So vitamin D deficiency is associated with an increase in those thrombotic episodes, AKA you're making clots when you're not supposed to, and they are, uh, which are frequently found in, in, in COVID-19. Vitamin D deficiency has also been found to be occur more frequently in patients with obesity and diabetes. And these conditions are reported to carry a higher mortality in COVID-19. The next paper we're going to discuss comes from journal, the Journal of Medical Virology. The title of it is Vitamin D Insufficiency as a Potential Culprit in Critical COVID-19 Patients. Um, they measured the serum vitamin D level of 376 patients and uh, the average uh, was 21.9 uh, nanomoles per liter, which is low. So patients with poor prognosis where it had significant lo significantly lower uh, serum levels of vitamin D compared to those with good prognosis. So in this paper's conclusion, it says serum vitamin D levels could be implicated in COVID-19 prognosis. Diagnosis of vitamin D deficiency could be a helpful adjunct in assessing patients, which again, leads me to my point. 
This is why I check vitamin D levels on every single patient that I come into the hospital with because as you're seeing from this paper, it's showing that it's, an, it's a marker of prognosis of patients with uh, with COVID-19 who need to be hospitalized, right? So the lower the, the lower the level, the more likely they are to have a poor prognosis in the hospital or a poor hospital outcome. The next paper we're gonna talk, to, com talk about comes from the Journal of Steroid Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. It's titled, Effect of Vitamin D Treatment and the Best Available Therapy versus Best Available Therapy on Intensive Care Unit Admission and Mortality Among Patients Hospitalized for COVID-19, a pilot randomized clinical study. So the conclusion, our pilot study demonstrated that administration of high dose vitamin D or 25 hydroxy vitamin D, a main metabolite of vitamin D, significantly reduced the need for ICU treatment of patients requiring hospitalizations due to proven COVID-19. The next paper we're gonna talk about comes from Nature, one of the most important journals that we have in, in medicine. It's called Analysis of Vitamin D Level Among Asymptomatic and Critically Ill COVID-19 Patients and its Correlation with Inflammatory Markers. In this study, they had a group A, which was uh, COVID-19 patients that were uh, had no symptoms, and they had a severely uh, ill uh, group or group B that required the B ICU. So it's not just, it's it's really even like two separate worlds, right? You have patients that are going to be admitted to the or not admitted to the hospital at all because they don't have any symptoms, right? They just happen to be positive for COVID-19, and then you had another group of patients who were. Um, sick enough not just to be in the hospital, but sick enough to be in the ICU, which is a big deal, okay? So they looked at several things. So they looked at uh, serum levels and inflammatory markers. So the first inflammatory marker they looked at was IL-6 or interleukin-6, which is an inflammatory marker or a cytokine, like we talked about. So the people who had a, uh, who were vitamin D deficient, okay? They had inflammatory markers that were, in this case of IL-6 of 19.3, and people who had a, vitamin D who were not who were not deficient, they uh, had an inflammatory mark, the IL-6 level of 12.8. Serum ferritin, which is uh, a iron binding protein that we use to diagnose anemia, but also we use as an inflammatory marker. People who had vitamin D deficiency had a serum ferritin of 319, and people who had uh, vitamin D sufficiency had a, a ferritin level of 186. The next inflammatory marker they looked at was TNF-alpha, or necrosis factor alpha, and the people who had vitamin D deficiency had a, a level of 13.26, and the people who had uh, vitamin D sufficiency had a level of 11.87. And this is where the kicker is, okay? The fatality rate was high in vitamin D deficient patients, 21% fatality versus a 3.1% fatality. Vitamin D level is markedly low in severe COVID-19 patients. Inflammatory response is high in patients with vitamin D deficiency and, and have, who have COVID. This all translates into an increased mortality in vitamin D deficient COVID-19 patients. This last paper is mind blowing to me, okay? So you've got a prestigious medical journal looking at patients who are, have no symptoms at all and people who have the six of the sick, people who are in the ICU, people who have a vitamin D deficiency have a 21% chance of dying from COVID-19 in an ICU. If they have no vitamin D deficiency, their chances of dying is 3.1%. That is mind blowing to me. Now the question is, what can we do about this, okay? So hopefully if you're watching this video, you're not sick, you're doing well. First things first, I'm not your doctor, and if I am your doctor, I'm checking these levels. But if I'm not your doctor, you need to find a doctor locally who's gonna be able to check your levels. And I need you to get a blood test called a 25-hydroxy vitamin D level. When you get that test back, what we want to look at, we want your number to be between 60 and 80. Per the literature, um, definitely if it's above 30, it's better than not being above 30, but the higher really kind of the better. If it's less than 30, then we have a problem. If it's less than, you know, less than 20 or less than 15, then we have a big problem. So we need to get your level up and the recommendation for the dose depends on the level that you have. So if you have a level of 60 to 80, whatever you're doing, you're doing a good job, keep it up, right? We also need to, that being said, depending on how, how, how high a level you're, that you're taking, uh, we also need to follow that and track it. So for my patients, I check it every three months. I'll let your doctor decide what you want to, what you want to do that. We, there is a potential for toxicity. It's just extremely rare. People, are, it's such a problem that people are deficient that it's almost, it's such a, I never see, you know, overdoses, even with ultra high doses of vitamin D that I give people, okay? So you need to have your doctor check it and then they will dose your vitamin D level depending on, uh, depending on what your, what your blood level is, okay? The question may arise, would you rather have uh, vitamin D from the sun or from supplementation? My answer is always the sun is better. The problem is, you know, it's February, uh, unless you live in Miami and it's 82 degrees outside, 
sorry, I hope you don't hate me for that, you're gonna have to supplement, you know? And even us in South Florida, frankly, we have to supplement in the winter because our UV index is very low. If you live in an area where you have sun, I recommend you downloading an app called D-Minder. It's free on uh, iPhone, Android, whatever. I have it on my iPhone. And what it's, what's cool about it is it's going to tell you what the UV index is for the area that you live in, and then you're gonna basically select your skin type, skin exposure, et cetera. And you go outside and it's going to, and you push play or push on, and it's going to basically calculate how many units of vitamin D you're able to convert in your skin. But the bottom line is I want you to try to get sun if you can get sun. If you can't get sun, um, or even if you can get sun, but you can't get adequate amounts of sun, AKA the amount of dose that your doctor recommends that you need uh, for the level, the blood level that you have, then I recommend you supplement. Um, I like supplementing with a vitamin D3, uh, K2 combination. Sometimes, unfortunately, in order to get the dose that you need, you can't get enough vitamin K2 with those supplements because generally the vitamin D, K2 supplements come with like 2,000 international units slash you know, whatever level of vitamin K2 comes in that particular supplement. You may have to just do a D3 only, but uh, you know, D3, come, it's, it's fat soluble, it's very bioavailable uh, as long as you eat with a meal and have some fat in your meal. Um, they have sublingual sprays. Uh, some, one of my patients has to have a, an injection that she takes subcutaneously, but the bottom line is when you need to get your vitamin D level up. I hope this was helpful. If um, for whatever reason, this was uh, long, too, too long, drawn out, you didn't like the papers, um, you thought I should do a whiteboard, something else that would be more interactive, I'd be happy to take suggestions, but just leave comments and see what you liked about it, what you didn't like, um, and how you know I can help. Uh, make content that helps you um, and your journey and health uh, better. So until next time, uh, I hope you have a fantastic day. I'm signing off.